In this video, we will cover the section uh, examples from 1.5. So the first example says, find the vertical asymptote of the function f of x equals ln of x minus 2. Now we know from college algebra that the argument of a log or natural log has to be greater than 0. So that means x minus 2 has to be greater than 0, which means x has to be greater than 2. And so my guess is that there is a limit at, or I'm sorry, there is a vertical asymptote at x equal to 2. And since my domain is x is greater than 2, that would mean there would be nothing on the left-hand side of the graph. So just based off of this, I'm assuming that my graph would have nothing on the left side here and would only have the natural log graph over here on the right. Now to confirm that, I will graph it in the graphing calculator. So I'm going to type in ln of x minus 2 and graph it. Um, and then I get this graph here. So you notice at x equal to 2, there would be my vertical asymptote, and then my graph is just on the right-hand side of that. Um, so it looks like this. Okay. And so then um, it does confirm with what we've done algebraically. And then if you want to verify, take the limit of the function as x approaches 2. Since there's nothing on the left, we're just going to take the um, limit from the right. And you can do that using the graph, and you'll notice that it approaches negative infinity. Since it's approaching positive or negative infinity, that means that there's a vertical asymptote at this value here, x equal to 2. So this is just confirming everything. So we kind of knew this from college algebra. We confirmed it with the graph. And then we took the one-sided limit to confirm with calculus that x equal to 2 is, in fact, our vertical asymptote. Now, for example 2, it says find the infinite limit. So it says take the limit as x approaches 1, positive 1, from the left. So this is not a negative. This is a symbol representing from the left of my function 1 over x squared minus 1. Now there's two ways to do that. One way is to create a chart and to use x values that are close to 1 on the left. So that would be 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, so on and so forth. And then you see where these y values are going, and then you can go ahead and guess what the limit would be. Okay, the other way to do it is to graph the function. And then once you graph it, you can determine visually what the limit is. So we'll do it both ways just to make sure um, that we can do it either way. Now, when you're doing this on the test, you do have to choose a way, or you can do both ways, but you do have to show your work on how you're getting this limit. You can't just put infinity and with nothing shown and no justification. That won't earn you the same amount of points as someone else who justifies how they arrived at that solution. Okay? So remember, the whole focus of this class is being able to communicate mathematically what you're thinking and what you're doing. Okay, um, so let's see here. We're going to go ahead and um, do this. So I'm going to type in my function here, but I'm going to ignore whatever number I get because I'm not sure what was stored in as x the last time I stored some values for x. So I'm going to go ahead and start storing my first number, 0 0.9 store as x, 
and hit enter to save it. Then I'm going to scroll up and copy my expression and then hit enter to plug in that x value. So I get negative 5.26 and dot dot dot, right, for the rest of the decimals. Okay, next, next uh, number, 0 0.99 store as x. Hit enter to save it. Go up and highlight my expression. Oops, it went too far. There we go. Hit enter to copy it and then hit enter again to plug in the 0.99. So I get negative 50.25 dot dot dot. Now let's go ahead and plug in 0 0.999 store as x. Hit enter to save. Highlight our expression. Enter to copy. Enter to plug it in. Negative 500.25 dot dot dot. Now 0 0.9 999 store x enter to save highlight our expression enter to copy enter to plug it in and i get negative 5000.25 dot 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 okay so you'll notice the numbers are going further and further into the negatives if i keep adding nines to this digit they're going to get even higher and higher and higher so they're eventually going to negative infinity, okay? So that's one way I can um, numerically determine the answer, okay? The other way is to graphically determine it. So I will go to y equals and type in one over parentheses x squared minus one, close the parentheses, um, and then graph it. And when I graph it, I get two asymptotes here. And so then I get a section that goes like this in the middle. And then I get a section that goes like this on the right. And a section that goes like this on the left. Okay. And now if I did not do this for the test, I would have to show my graph for the test. Um, and then visually figure out what that limit is. And you'll notice, I'm approaching one. This is positive one. But as I come from the left, you'll notice that the graph is going down, okay? And so what y value is it going to if it's going down? It's going to eventually go to negative infinity. So whether you're doing the problem with a graph visually or you're doing it with the chart, you still should end up with the same answer, okay? If you are using the graph, make sure you draw that graph so I can see how you're getting negative infinity. Um, sometimes people will draw the graph and then read it wrong. So they'll draw the graph, but then they'll look at this side and say the answer is positive infinity, and that would be incorrect, okay? So I need to make sure I see your graph and then I see how you're getting um, negative infinity, okay? So example three says determine whether the function has a vertical asymptote or a removable discontinuity at x equals negative four. Now remember, removable discontinuities mean that um, when I take the limit as x approaches negative four, I will get a limit value, okay? I will get a number, not an infinity or a negative infinity, but an actual real number, like zero, five, negative, one half, things like that, okay? So if I take the limit of this function as I approach negative four, and I don't get um, a real number, um, a, a definite real number, um, then this limit, will be a non-removable discontinuity, okay? Another way of doing the problem is looking at the one-sided limits. If the one-sided limits go to infinity or negative infinity, then it's automatically a vertical asymptote, okay? So I need to look at my one-sided limits. And remember, it only takes one of them to go to infinity in order for it to be a vertical asymptote. Now, even if this were um, 
six, uh, x squared minus 16, even if I factored that into x plus four and x minus four, it would not cancel with the denominator. The reason being is because it's not just x squared minus 16, it's the ln of that expression. So therefore, those factors are not on their own, they're inside this function, okay? So even if you could factor this, it will not cancel with the denominator at all. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out in case some people are trying to reduce it a little bit to get the limits, okay? I could do the charts or I could do the graph. Either way, I have to show my work, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do the graph because it would be the same graph for both. I'm just visually looking at two different sides of x equal to, I'm sorry, negative 4. The problem did ask us to talk about x equal to negative 4. So let me go here and graph this. So the ln of x squared plus 16 divided by x plus 4. And notice every time I have a fraction that has two terms in the numerator or two terms in the denominator, I always put them in parentheses. If it's more than one term in that denominator, it does need to be in parentheses. And if it's more than one term in the numerator, it does need to be in parentheses. If I didn't put a parenthesis around the because the ln was going to automatically group these together, okay? So let's graph this and see if I can draw that. And you know, your graph doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to have the same um, information that you're trying to draw. So one, two, three, four. It looks like there's an asymptote at negative four. And it looks like the right-hand side is going side is going down okay so then I've got this here so if I'm looking at negative 4 from the left that means I'm approaching it from this side well if I chase my graph the y values are going where they're going to negative infinity okay whereas if I look at negative 4 but from the right that means I'm going in this direction if I trace my graph going in that direction, it's going up, which means this is going to positive infinity. So even though the graph four won't exist because it's going to different values, one um, side limits do exist, and in negative infinity or positive infinity. Okay, it means that there is a vertical as x equal to negative 4. Okay? You need to show this kind of stuff. You can't just assume, you can't just say, oh, my denominator equals 0 x plus 4, therefore my vertical exponent is going to be at x minus 4. Um, it doesn't work like that. You need to have your reason behind that. Okay? And you need to start using your calculus reading. Okay? So this is calculus. And that's 